Hey, hey, this is the wild around us. I'm Jeremy, your personal naturalist, and this... And I'm Eric. And we're coming to you from the Squam Lakes Natural Science Center, where we advance understanding of ecology by exploring nature. This season, we are going to be introducing ourselves on YouTube. You may already be watching us on YouTube. And if you are not and listening to the podcast form, you can head on over to YouTube, search for the Squam Lakes Natural Science Center, and check us out there. We have a lot of fun videos to go along with our episodes this time. Or if you just want the audio version, you can search your podcast app of choice and search for the wild around us there. We're going to start off by talking about a really neat animal called a fisher. And fisher are interesting, Eric. What can you tell us about fisher to get us introduced? Well, I mean, these are amazing animals. They're one of my favorite animals. Mm. Um, and despite its name, you know, people thinking, oh, they, they eat fish, or there's some, maybe it's related to a fish, or it's a, something that looks like a fish. It's, that doesn't have anything to do with that. Mm -hmm. It's not a fish at all. In fact, it's a carnivorous mammal. And this is an animal that belongs to the weasel family. Scientifically, fish are known as Martes panante. And that's my best Latin that I can do. That was pretty good. So picture this, everyone. You have a sleek, dark brown fur coat on this animal with a bushy tail that's nearly as long as its body. It has short legs and sharp claws, and a distinctive facial mask of lighter fur. Yeah, it often bounds along ridges or across stream valleys, but almost always it's moving through forested natural communities. When it moves, it does so with agility and grace. It has sharp claws that it uses to help it climb trees with ease. And its long, slender body allows it to navigate that dense forest area pretty well on the ground or even up in the tree canopy. Now, taxonomically speaking, the fisher is closely related to other members of the Mustelidae family. That's such as weasels, otter, and mink. And these animals all share similar physical characteristics and hunting behaviors. Well, let's talk names for a second. The fisher goes by many different regional names. It probably is because of its wide distribution across North America, but in some regions, it's called a fisher. And early immigrants gave it that name probably because of the European polecat, which is also known as a fiche or fichet or fithu. And in other areas, it's known as a fisher cat. Despite not being feline or even eating felines, it doesn't fish, really. It doesn't really regularly even eat fish. So where can you find these elusive creatures? Fisher are primarily found in the forests of North America, ranging from the boreal forests of Canada to the northern uh, parts of the United States. Now, they prefer dense, mature forests with plenty of tree cover. And this can consist of conifers that you'll find up in the boreal forest, so all the evergreens, or down in the northern United States, it's a mixture of conifers and other hardwood trees. The key thing is that they have to have many hollow trees in that forest for dens. A fisher is going to avoid an area with little or no canopy cover. So that would include things like fields or areas that have been heavily logged. Wow, Eric, that's a pretty expansive range, actually. Mm -hmm. But what about kind of their home territory? Their home territory is also still really quite extensive. Um, it can vary greatly, though, depending on a variety of different factors, including habitat quality and food availability. But they typically establish territories that range anywhere from about 6 to 15 square miles. Males tend to have a larger home territory. And this may overlap the territory of several females. Each animal kind of moves repeatedly around its territory in a circular pattern that may take several days to travel through. Mm -hmm. The distance they travel depends upon food availability, the terrain, location of the dens, and, of course, 
weather plays a factor. Fisher often travel greater distances, actually in the winter time, when food is harder to find. So Eric, when are you most likely to see a fisher? That's a question I think a lot of people would like to have the answer to. Mm -hmm. um, I know I would as a photographer, but um, the answer can vary depending on the time of the year. Um, although they can be active during the day and at night, fisher tend to be most active around sunrise and sunset. That's what we find a lot of on our trail cameras. Weather can also be a factor, as you mentioned before, but the key thing is hunger. That's gonna be the main reason for motivating a fisher to going out and start searching for something to eat, regardless of the time. So the next time you're out for a walk in the woods, keep an eye out for a fisher. If you're lucky, you might just see one bound down off a tree and head off into the woods. But they are pretty elusive. But if you do see one, it's a great sign of the biodiversity that you might have in your area. Yeah. So appreciate the fisher that you might see. But whatever happens, don't forget to get out and explore the wild around you. Thanks for joining us today. And we'll see you next time.